Welcome to Mastering Work Problems Part 3. We're going to move on to a more difficult work problem. Again, we're still sticking with the idea of lifting an object attached to a chain or a rope or a cable. Uh, we started this series with just the chain, the rope, or the cable itself that has a certain weight. Then we moved on to the chain or the rope or the cable carrying something. Now we'll do a really gruesome example where we're going to drag something up that has uh, obviously the chain, the rope or the cable that has a weight. You have a body at the bottom of it and then that object is losing weight as you're pulling it up. So you have uh, not only a change in weight of the rope but you also have the change in the weight of the body as you move things up. I'll read the problem out loud for those who can't read, just kidding. A five meter rope that weighs one kilogram per meter is hanging from a tree. Hanging from the bottom of the rope is a 70 kilogram outlaw. The outlaw is losing blood from a severe gash in his leg and by the time the body reaches the branch, half of his blood has been lost. Using, using the fact that the man began with five kilograms of blood in his body and assuming it drained out at a constant rate, uh, determine how much work is done lifting the outlaw to the branch where the top of the rope is tied. I will again approach this problem the same way I, I have approached each of the previous problems. I have some object, namely the rope, that I can slice up and each slice I can just move to the top. And so recall that's what we've done before. I'm not gonna, if you want to see how this is done you can go to uh, the second video, but nothing really changes with that situation. Now we're going to talk about the body, moving the body. Now remember, the body is losing weight. It starts at a certain weight, so maybe I should write that in here. It's not 170. It starts at 70 kilograms, and that's actually the mass, not the weight. And then over time, he will end up lighter because of the blood he's losing. And remember, he starts with 5 kilograms of blood. That's how much blood a 70, 70 kilogram body will hold and he will end up with and he'll end his travels to the top of the branch uh, at 67.5 kilograms in mass because the amount of blood that he's lost. He's lost half of that 5 kilograms so he's at 67.5. Again I've seen instructors um, write up a linear equation for this. I'm not a big fan of that either. Um, I think that it's easier to, to write out how the force is changing as you're lifting the body. And remember what I've said before, if you have an object that isn't elongated over the entire length, and just a, it, instead it's just a point, you're going to scoot. So you're going to find out how much force am I using to maintain this height, and then I'm going to scoot it. Find out how much force I'm maintaining to uh, using to maintain the next height, and then scoot it. Find the force here, scoot. So it's force times the distance. So you have the work of the eighth slice is going to be the force that is on the ice slice times the distance you're going to move that slice, the body, in fact. So the force of the body times the distance you're moving that body. And as we've said, we're scooting the body, so the distance is just going to be a delta y that we're moving it. That's in meters, right? The force, again, is mass times acceleration, which is gravity in this case. And let me just pull out gravity out of this situation. I'm going to write that out front. 9.8 meters per second squared times the mass. I'll just write that in here. And then the distance again is in meters. And it's kind of a bad notation that I'm looking at it because mass uses the letter M. Uh, but maybe I'll use the unit blocking notation so you know that these are units. The mass of the ith slice, well let's see, and better yet, you could call it the math, mass of the body at the ith scoot. Well let's see, initially he weighed 70 kilograms, right? Or actually that was his mass, but he's losing some mass as he gets scooted along. Let's find out what he's actually losing in terms of mass. To do this, we're going to need to know uh, how much mass he loses for every meter we scoot him. We know that he loses two and a half kilograms 
over the five meter hull. So this means that he loses 2.5 kilograms every five meters, or in other words, a half a kilogram per meter. All right, that's the reduction. So going back to the formula, this is a half of a kilogram per meter, and we just need to know, because obviously the units here don't work out. This is supposed to be mass, right? So this should be kilograms. This also should be kilograms. So we're obviously missing something here. We're missing a number of meters. Well, if you think about it, when the body is up at this point right here, it's lost so many kilograms of blood and this height would be the height y sub i. Well, y sub i star, really. Again, my little i sub i star business. So 70 kilograms minus a half a kilogram per meter times the number of meters that we've lifted the body. y sub i star, and I'm just going to have to kind of squeeze in here that those are meters that I'm multiplying this by. Let me clean this up so you can actually see and I'll move all the units out back. Uh, so this is 9.8 times 70 minus 1 half y sub i star delta y. Uh, and what we pulled out back here is we have meters uh, times kilograms. So maybe I'll write it this way, kilograms times meters per second squared. And then we have this extra little meter right here so times meters. And if you take a look at that, that's newtons, meters, newton meters, which is work. So here we had, again, the force to move was just mass times gravitational pull, mass times acceleration. The mass is the hardest part. He has a starting mass, but he's losing some. We found out it's a half a kilogram per meter times the number of meters we pulled him up. So sum up all these, this work. Again, all these little scoots, we're going to sum up. And if we did that, the total work, again, we're raising them to five feet, so the inner row would be zero to five times of 9.8, not times, of 9.8 times 70 minus one half y. And instead of a delta y, we'll do a dy again, because the infinitesimally small movements. And to be exact here, the total work done would be that added to the work of lifting the rope itself. And again, you could figure out uh, fairly easily uh, what this these numbers are, um, but that's how you do that if you have a leaky bag of sand or something like that. Um, I could have easily said he lost all of his blood, right? And then this rate of loss here would be different. The main thing to note that in these problems is that um, they will often give you a constant rate of decrease of blood or, or sand or something like that. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. If you have better techniques for integration, uh, you, can, you can have that he loses half his blood, um, his remaining blood that is, every meter that it, uh, you lift the body. Uh, in that case, uh, you would need integration by parts or something like that. Maybe I'll reserve that for an extended video.